before it was, was through uh, someone destroying it. Inadvertently. Yeah, actually, I'd, I'd cast the whole wall, and the night before the opening, you know, I'd come to peel it off, and it was the big moment. And I walked in, and the wall was just <laughs> a pile of torn paper because the, the maintenance man in the building had thought it was just something goopy that had <laughs> <laughs> come out of the wall and stuck to it. So he'd torn it all off, and it was just in a pile. And at first, I mean, the curator was just uh, beside himself. What are we going to do? And then I thought, no, I'll sew it back together. <laughs> so I went along the wall and I felt, you know, how the bricks, uh, it was almost like braille, <laughs> taking each piece and finding the right spot. And I managed to get it all back together and sewed it up. Then it became almost like a map, mm -hmm. piecing, the, uh, piecing them back together. All the work sort of operates that way, almost like a map. Now, there are sort of little accents along the wall. There's a, a June bug sticking to one end of the wall. There's a, a I'm not sure what type of fish it is. A That's dried, a flounder. A yeah. flounder, a dried <laughs> flounder, a shellac dried flounder. Now, how do you work those those uh, elements into it? Well, I think the, f the fish for me is a real kind of... Uh, it's there in, in um, just about every uh, piece that I do because it draws itself with light. It's down there in the shadows and uh, much of what I do is drawing with light. Um, I never know how I'm going to order things until I'm in the particular space and I see what I can do with the lighting. And uh, When I think about fish swimming, they draw themselves with light. They catch the light and they glint and they take on the color almost of the water that they're swimming in. So they're the perfect kind of um, mercurial kind of image for me, I guess. And, I'll, and uh, I see a strong connection between birds and fish. It's the same thing, moving really freely through an element. It's almost like flying underwater, I guess. I, see, uh, it, I guess a lot of your work has to do with motion as well and, and how you perceive it. Because uh, I noticed uh, during the installation of the uh, discs, you were concerned with making a sine wave out of those. Why, why a particular sine wave, and why did you feel it necessary to do it in that way? Um, well, actually, in a way, these become almost like uh, serpents <laughs> when they're up on the wall, which I didn't really notice until they were all hung. They almost take on that continuous kind of wave serpent pattern. Set up this way, they're staggered in the gallery so that they aren't uh, uh, I should explain, there's 12 discs on, on um, each wall, but they aren't c perfectly across from each other, so they imply a continuous wave, kind mm -hmm. of alternating. <laughs> I guess I guess implied motion. Real hopeful thing, I guess. <laughs> now, um, th along with that, I mean, we've got this, uh, what is this, felter? Boot lining? Or <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the kind of felt that I had. Now, uh, again, why, why would you want to put this on the floor and how do you feel it ha helps the, the environment that you've created? Well, I, I hope to um, the work to be like an invitation where people feel comfortable to come in and sit and spend time, which you often don't in galleries. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess I was hoping um, with the felt that it might feel like a um, kind of separate, like an island where people could sit. And, uh, I, I, just being here, and, you know, through the week, it, it very much softens the gallery to a greater extent. It does feel more sort of comfortable and relaxing, let's say. Oh, good. <laughs> well, uh, you're sitting <laughs> on it, so... Yeah, I usually don't sit during the show. <laughs> um, uh, maybe the last piece that we can get into is the uh, window installation. Again, uh, I guess you've almost... It, it does relate to the other works in the gallery, but you've, you've dealt with the window as a, a separate entity in itself and your approach to that. Um, in the window, I've... Uh, do you want me to talk about the individual pieces or just the whole little well, environment? Uh, yeah, as, as an environment in itself. It's also about um, trees and the possibility of, of, I mean, I've constructed a kind of thing. <laughs> I have no name for, for the one piece, sort of branches and cast paper. But once I cast it, it almost looked like hide stretched over. Someone asked me if it was a little mini ceremonial tent, and I hadn't thought of it that way. T to me, when I was making it, it was almost like uh, making a new animal out of the branches. And this is sort of what happened with this little tail <laughs> sticking up. That's kind of his home. I brought the, the rocks from um, a little beach in Wakefield where I'd photographed them for the uh, invitation for this show. 
So I brought them along, and those are and the fire, uh, there's some charcoal uh, at the front of the window, and that's um, left over from wood that was burned. I photographed all my artwork for this show at night time by the river, so just by the light of the fire, just like this big bonfire. So that's again part of the ritual. Brought along little um, bits, I guess, little remnants, artifacts. <laughs> well, Karen, I'd like you to, to thank you for coming all the way to North Bay and, and uh, I very much enjoy this installation, and I think uh, anyone that uh, comes into the gallery will uh, surely get a, a feeling for the, the environment that you've created and, and, and the ritual process that we've and just I hope discussed. a lot of people will come in. It's really set up for the people of North Bay. Okay. So. Good. Thank you. Thanks.